Yeah. Oh. Where are you from? Albuquerque, New Mexico. What was your first break? Um, what was my first break? What is what is a break technically? <laughs> I mean, I I don't know. Uh, I guess my first break was when I got to um, uh, got to be a part of a. Uh, Duke City shootout uh, festival for short films and that's when I really loved being a part of the community of collaborating with all these different artists and making film because I've only previously done like theater and uh, make-believe and dress up uh, going through my uh, mom's trunk closet <laughs> so I feel like I don't know I think um, yeah I think that would be I don't know. What have you been in? Um, most uh, most recently, I've uh, I'm in a TV show called Salem. Um, but previous to that, I have been in a couple of films. Um, one that is like close and deep to my heart is called it's called Tiger Eyes, and it's based off of the novel by Judy Bloom, who also, coincidentally, she wrote it. Uh, she wrote the screenplay. So that's also like a really that's when I realized too then like this is what I want to do so I don't know if that is technically a break I don't know <laughs> how do you feel about this career uh, how do I I'm amazing I mean I'm I couldn't my god I couldn't be more grateful especially living in Los Angeles like there's so many people who want this job and so it sort of is coming back here because we're still currently filming season two so coming back here and seeing so many people like really hustling and bustling, it just sort of like makes me feel like, Jesus, I couldn't be more fortunate to be able to actually be working because so many people want that. So, yeah. How did you decide to become an actor? Oh my God. Uh, um, God, I, ever since I could remember, I mean, I've always loved I've always loved performing, but actually, no, I, sp I specifically remember, I was like th uh, three years old and I was playing, you know, um, like just, I was playing with my mom and she was the Wicked Witch and I was Snow White and she was like, you know, playing the witch and she was like, and I'm going to give you this poisonous apple and when you take a bite, you're going to fall asleep and, you know, going all bonkers. And I took the bite and I just like fell asleep. And I stayed asleep, and like I was believably like very silent, like not believably dead, but it was just like, oh, this girl is actually really playing the part. And I think just performing and just like just make believe is just such a powerful art, and I just I love it so much. <laughs> How would you describe your specialty or type? What is it? Um, for for acting? Mm -hmm. Um. 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 You know, I always am drawn to really complicated, dense characters because it really allows you to really research and get dive deep into it. I love physical roles, and that's why I feel so fortunate to be able to play such like a physical, meaty character on Salem. Um, like, I get to play a monster, and who gets to say that they get to play a monster? I mean, I literally am in a latex, three hour, three and a half hour process of makeup. Uh, burned victim outfit and not only did I change my voice for it and like just everything it just I don't know just being able to be someone completely different from you is just so magical and so awesome <laughs> who's your favorite actor who you look up to oh god there are so many um oh my god uh I would say like Kate Blanchett, um, Judy Dench, Maggie Smith, um, women in general, Tilda Swinton. Um, I mean, then there's like Christopher Plummer, and you know, there's Robert De Niro. Um, ah, so many, so many. <laughs> I could just go on and on. <laughs> what would your ideal job be? Ideal? I think I'm living my ideal job. I don't think it gets any better than this. And I think, yeah. I'll leave it at that. Do you consider yourself to be lucky? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Like I said previously, um, yes. 
I am so fortunate. And um, yeah, and I think also not only just for my job, but also the way that I have been supported since I was a mere babe. Um, like uh, having such incredible parents like my mom and dad and uh, family and support. I think that has also allowed me to achieve my goals because I have had that because many people don't have that. So fortunate for that as well. Let's go all preachy. <laughs> Sorry. Would you rather have a car or a diploma? A diploma? I don't want a car. <laughs> I wish I didn't have a car. Um, no. Uh, I mean, I have to have a car, but I, if I had the choice, I don't think I would have a car. How do you feel about globalization? Globalization? Uh, I have a love-hate relationship with globalization because basically... Um, it's a great opportunity for everybody to reconnect con with all around the world, you know, like Twitter. I think it's brilliant, especially to spread awareness for ca so great causes or, or charities or um, any of that, right? But then there's also, it's like there's McDonald's. Uh, oh, actually, I will say, so I was in Turkey, and I just remember seeing a McDonald's, no, wait, was it? It was a Pizza Hut and a Domino's sandwich sandwiching this like old probably hundred year old restaurant probably the size I mean very very tiny it was a kebab uh, turkey Turkish rest Turkish uh, I don't know joint and it looked so overwhelmed by these two <laughs> massive uh, companies and I think I don't know I think yeah it's 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 sort of weird it's hard to wrap your head around it because it's such a great thing but then also such a sad thing what do you think about the amount of stuff people buy? It's crazy. It really is. And I think, you know, the way that, um, especially I find Americans, like I think uh, the way that they believe that success is uh, sort of determined by other people's standards. Like, I don't, like, you're, uh, it's through the eyes of somebody else. Like, I don't know, your measure of success should be of your own success. It shouldn't be by everybody else's standards. Like, the idea that you have to have a mansion and, like, two cars and, like, uh, um, and, like, kids. I think that's just so much pressure and so unnecessary and having, like, three, you know, a lot of money. And I just, I don't think... I don't see that as success at all. Like, if you're happy, I find that that's success. Um, if you love what you do, that's success. So, Would you rather live the American way or be a socialist? Ooh. Well, I feel like I just bashed America. <laughs> so I'm going to say American way because I do think that uh, being an American, well, first off, being a woman uh, and being able to have the opportunities uh, that I do is great because I live in America, because I live in such a country that allows me to do that. What does the future look like to you? Uh, how about just living in the present? <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about having children? They intimidate me, you know? I have uh, two cousins uh, that are, oh God, they're gonna kill me. Um, 10 and seven? Anyway, when they were like five and eight, I was just, I was so, I couldn't take care of them because they would just like have, they would have tantrums and they would, <laughs> they would, uh, <laughs> it was really hard. It was just like, I didn't know. So yeah, they intimidate me, period. <laughs> Can you tell me what conflicts or challenges the world is facing today? Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Where do I even begin? Um, well, actually, I'm surprised how much energy I have considering that I just started, um, I don't know if you're aware, but it's called, it's a fun, uh, fundraiser called Live Below the Line. And basically you live off a dollar fifty a day for five days um, and to spread awareness of poverty around the world, which is completely unjust unjustifiable and it's all about inequality. And so what this, I did this program last year as well, and I just started today and I don't know why I have so much energy because I have only had like oatmeal today and it's, it's really depressing and it's really like eye opening to what, um, to what actually people live off of. Um, cause we're just, I'm just living off of a dollar fifty a day for food and drink, but Imagine a dollar fifty a day for food, drink, and everything else. I mean, it is crazy. Um, 
oh my god I could go on on about this but that just poverty let alone I was actually at um, DC two weekends ago um, supporting um, the Global Citizen event I don't know if about the Global Citizen Earth Day and uh, that was amazing I mean just the amount of people that showed up and everybody had this progressive and proactive outlook and they were all ready to just like change the world and make a difference because honestly like it's us that do need to make the difference I mean we're the ones who should b love this world that has I mean look at this like I mean come on I mean what a perfect world is we also live in California but <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's just like I could get so crazy about this because it's just we should give the environment um, love back because it has given us love why don't we give it back so yeah <laughs> what's your favorite way to communicate Ooh, I I like snail mail <laughs> I really do like I think when I get a thank you card it is so unusual now that it actually give it's so much more significant because you're just like oh my god a handwritten they took their time to do that so crazy yeah what do you think of the creative scene in Los Angeles um we were just um I think that it is you know I think that uh it's it's not like um, other places where I find that culture is is so prominent. So it's like it's right there out in the open. But um, I feel like with LA, I mean, I've lived here for three and a half years, and I think it's been it, it has taken time for me to really see things. I think you have to dig deep to find things but I really do believe that like the music scene here is just unbelievable like I love going to the Echoplex and grooving it out and enjoying funky soul night because I actually I was grooving way too hard that I uh, actually had to go to the ER <laughs> because I dislocated my knee so I can't groove way too hard but funky soul does do that to me but anyway like I, I love I just I, I, there is a huge culture here and um, especially I mean it's growing and I, I feel I feel it as well yeah uh, what is your favorite book film and music right now oh right now okay um, well I read um, a couple of years ago I think my favorite book is um, a just kids by Patti Smith and I thought that that was so beautifully written and so inspiring and just like amazing um, movie wise recently that I saw um, I would say because I have so many favorite movies but the one that I saw last year was I don't know Italian so I'm just gonna try to pronounce it but it's uh, La Grande Bellezza, Bellezza The Great Beauty amazing just gorgeous. Oh, it was such a beautiful piece of work. And um, music. music. Um, recently, recently, I'm starting to really like uh, Saint Motel. I really, really like them. And um, hmm, uh, Alt J, I'm enjoying. Jungle, I'm enjoying. Um, but then, of course, you know, Bill Withers and The Cure and Hall and Oates are like my all-time faves. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.